Some people say Buddhism. In the correct way is Buddhism. In America we say Buddhism. So if I give you some, and these will be in your notes, but it's one of the world's largest religions. They say that it originated 2,500 years ago. Now here's what the Buddhists believe. They believe that the human life is one of suffering and that meditation, spiritual and physical labor or work and good behavior are the ways to achieve enlightenment or what they call nirvana. Say it with me. Nirvana. 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 You might have seen people wearing a shirt that says Nirvana. There's a rock group that's called Nirvana. But Nirvana means, listen to me please, Nirvana means enlightenment. So the moment we touch enlightenment, and this is the reason why I gave you all these notes before we reach Buddhism, because I'm hoping that now bulbs, light bulbs are going off of your head. Because you should start to recognize the things I'm saying. When I use the word enlightenment, when I use the word nirvana, can anybody connect it with some word that we have learned in this class? Enlightenment, nirvana, what, what am I trying to, to achieve? Can you remember the word? No? The word I'm looking for is truth. Please say the word with me. Truth. Truth. And I said that there are some sense of purpose. You remember that? Yes. And I said that those sense of purpose are false, but we need to overcome those sense of purpose and seek the truth. Yeah. Now, truth is another word for enlightenment or nirvana. Truth. Truth means you're seeking the real meaning of life. But I said that the world teaches us some false sense in life. What are those false senses? First, love, love security, security purpose. and purpose. We said that these three senses that the world gives us of security, of love, of purpose, we said that those senses are false. And that's why we said we are seeking the truth. So what this means is already the guy who was seeking Buddhism or who created Buddhism, we're going to call him Buddha or Buddha. This guy already recognized, he recognized that all these senses of the world are false. He recognized it. And so he was seeking enlightenment, also called truth. Enlightenment is also called truth. truth. Please stay with me. Are you here with me? Yeah. Enlightenment is also called truth. truth. Who was seeking truth? Buddha. Buddha. And what he decided is because he could not find truth. That's the story of Buddha. He could not find truth. But he says he found enlightenment. And he found it under a tree. Now the story goes that the guy who is Buddha was originally a warrior. He was a rich guy. Some people say he was in the royal family. But he was not happy with his life. So he left everything and started to seek the truth. Now along the way, when he was trying to seek the truth, he had many experiences. One of the experiences that he had was that he was a homeless person. He used to beg for money. He started traveling. He started traveling and meeting a lot of people. He started meditating. Do you remember the word meditation? Yes. What is meditation? Trying to calm yourself. Trying to calm yourself. If... Buddha was seeking truth through meditation. What does it mean? That he's trying to calm himself. He was trying to calm himself. Means what was going on in his life? Chaos. Thank you. So he as a human being. Who am I talking about? Buddha, Buddha was having what in his life? 
chaos. And because of that chaos, he was seeking the truth. truth through... Ah, you see how it's all coming together now? Yeah. Now people say that the reason why... How many of you are Americans? Raise your hand. Americans, Americans, Americans. I'm half American. <laughs> we got one, okay, one and a half, you and I. You're American, right? So I said I'm, I'm half, so it's one and a half. So you, here's what they say about Americans. They say the reason why Americans have a problem understanding other cultures is because they don't travel internationally as much. The moment you travel internationally, you see other people and you recognize that even though we look different, look at all of us, just look around. We all look so different. We all look so different. All of us. Our hair is different. Our face is different. Our skin color is different. Our expressions are different. Our height is different. We speak with different accents. But we're all human. Isn't that right? Yes. We're all human. Does anybody have yellow colored blood? Do you have yellow colored blood? Do you have green colored blood? If you, if you bleed, do, do you get like shiny, color, like shiny sparkles? No. no, it's the same color. What's the color? Red. It's, we, we bleed the same color. And why is this? It's because we're all human, all of us. We're all the same. And so when we travel internationally and get to see other human beings, we understand that we're all actually alike. We're all alike. Who is Buddha? Somebody tell me, who is Buddha? The creator of the Buddhism. Yes, who was he? He was a, per a person. Who, who was he? He was seeking truth. He, he, was, he was originally, he was originally, who was he originally? He was a warrior. He's from a royal family. But what did he do? He left everything. He left his home. I mean, I don't know if he had children, I don't know if he had a wife, he had a family. But he left everything and he started seeking the truth. So he tried to seek the truth through meditation, traveling, and also homelessness. Is everybody listening? Yes. So every, every morning, so my wake up time every morning is 4.45. I wake up at 4.45 and the first class that I teach is at 6 a.m. I, you know I teach martial arts, right? Boxing, kickboxing, I, I teach martial arts. My first class starts at 6. Now my wife is also a teacher. Now my wife is working at a, a business establishment downtown, St. Louis. And so I'm waiting for her in my car. And outside of my car, I see something that really breaks my heart. It really breaks my heart. I see two young people. I, I, I swear they would not be older than any of you two young people a boy and a girl and they were homeless you know what is homeless yeah. they're homeless they just have one bag and they're hiding in a corner because it's cold and you know what they're doing they're taking drugs two young people just like you and I with no home and they're all alone and they have an injection and they're taking drugs and and my my heart was was broken on the inside because I'm thinking they're somebody's children. Yes. They're somebody's family. Where are they from? Did they run away? Were they kidnapped? What happened? But it's so terrible. So Buddha lived a life of a homeless person because when you're homeless, you live the life that's so hard. You see, when the, when the heat does not work, Everybody is shivering, right? Yes. Remember the time everybody comes in with your hoodie and your cap because it's cold. Imagine if you have to live like that outside on the street when it is minus temperature. But there are people who live that way. There are people who really live that way. And, and they struggle, but they live. Some of them die, but they live. And so Buddha lived a life of homelessness. He lived a life of traveling. He also tried meditation why? What was he seeking? The truth. He was seeking the truth. Now, all of this that he did, he was not able to find truth. 
He says he did not find truth. But what Buddha says is that he found a middle way. This is what he says. Buddha says he found a middle path. And so in Buddhism, they teach something called the noble truths of Buddhism. The noble truths. These are the noble truths. The first is called suffering. In Hindi, it's called Dukkha or Dukkha. That's the first one, suffering. The second one is called Samudaya. The third one is called Niroda. And the fourth one is called Maga. Okay, we're going to run through it real quick. So these are the four noble truths that Buddha taught. Are you listening? Is everybody here? Yes. This is the first one. It's called Dukkha. Everybody say it. Dukkha, Dukkha means suffering. Dukkha means suffering. That's what it means. It means going through suffering. And why did he understand Dukkha is because he also lived a life of homelessness. The second one is called Samudaya. And Samudaya means that all your suffering comes because you have a desire. So you desire money, you desire food, you desire home, you desire clothes. And so because of that, you seek something. And because you seek it, that suffering or the wanting of that is the second noble truth, also called Samudaya. Everybody say it. Samudaya. What's the first one? Dukkha. Dukkha. What's the second one? Samudaya. Samudaya. Now the third one is called Niroda, which is, according to him, when you choose not to desire for something. So, for example, if, if, you, if you like to eat a lot of food, you enjoy eating a lot of food, okay? So every time you see food, you're going to enjoy it, right? But supposing if you realize, okay, I need to put a little bit of control on how I eat and when I eat. So that controlling of that desire is what Buddha called as Niroda. Say it. Niroda. Niroda. So Niroda means I control my desire. And then the last one is what Buddha says is the path to what he calls enlightenment and that was called Maga or the middle way. So according to Buddha, when you can control all your desires, when you can learn to live the life of a homeless person, when you understand that you should not crave for everything but control your desires, then he says you can find the middle way or Maga. And according to Buddha, that gave him enlightenment. Now, even though Buddha teaches this, he also taught something called karma. Now, karma means you don't die and finish. According to the law of karma, when you die, there is rebirth. So in karma, if I'm, a good, if I'm a good person this life, maybe in the next life I'll come back as a, maybe a wealthy person, rich person. If I'm a, if I'm a bad guy, if I, if I treat everybody badly, then I might come back as a homeless person. Or I might even come back as an animal. And everybody will be chasing the animal to kill it. And I'll be like, ooh, what a horrible life. Everybody's trying to kill me. And they say that's the law of karma. So when he taught karma, according to him, he believed that's how life continues. One big circle. That we don't end our life, but you continue. So according to Buddha, that teaching helps people to stay good. Because if you're good, then you come back better. If you're good, you come back better. According to Buddha, the cycle of rebirth or the teaching of rebirth helps people to become better human beings. So that's, the, that's pretty much the law of, 
or the teaching of Buddhism. Now I want to ask everybody, if you think that we broke down true religion, modern religion, spirituality, radicalism, and the last one was fusion, where do you think Buddhism fits in out of these five? Think about it. Spirituality? You think radical? Spirituality. You think spirituality? You have to give me a reason. Why do you think Buddhism is either one of those five? Would you like to explain why? Yeah, I think because uh, like you try to seek the truth by yourself. So it's like the means of spirituality is like yourself with uh, against all. So I think. Okay, does anybody have any other answers? Where's my intelligent student? Today you're very quiet. Are you thinking about something today? Are you busy thinking? Are you good? Okay. Do you, do you have an answer for me? Where do you think Buddhism fits out of the five? Anybody else has? What about my uh, star lady student? Where does Buddhism fit? Do you, do you, have you thought about it? Jaden. What about Jaden? The, the other Jaden. That's the other Jaden, right? Yes. Huh? <laughs> what? Lifestyle? So you think it's more like a lifestyle? You think Buddhism is a lifestyle? Okay, but do you think it fits in any one of those five that we discussed? True religion, modern religion, spirituality. Do you think it fits in any of the five? You also agree spirituality, okay? Anybody else has any other thoughts? Where does Buddhism fit? No? No? Yes? Why do you say radical? That's a really interesting point. Why do you say radical? But did you remember what is radical? Radical is not a great thing, actually. Anybody remembers the meaning of radical religion? What is radical religion? Come on. Yes. You think it's true religion? Okay. Why, why do you say so? <clears throat> I like to have reasons why we, why we understand something. You say true? So we got two people who say true religion. We say one who says radical. And how many said spiritual, spirituality? Two. One, two. Okay. What do you say? Modern. You think it's modern? Oh, so because he left all the traditional things and, oh, okay. Good point. That's a good point. So, there's no right or wrong answer. When you classify a religion, there's no right or wrong answer because it is a perspective. That's the reason why I'm asking you to tell me why you think Buddhism is any one of these. Okay? So, as we, as we close today, the last point that I want to make for everybody, again, this is all going to be in your notes. We're going to expand a little bit more on true religion. What is true religion? I understand true religion by three points. Very easy points. What is true religion? One, true religion aligns itself with history. You see, if I'm going to follow a religion, the religion should be true. You understand? Yes? yes. If a religion is true, then I can follow it. Imagine if the religion tells me that um, I believe in a flying donkey. Is that based on any truth? No. Because first of all, donkeys don't fly. Yeah. Secondly, we don't have donkeys in America. <laughs> we get them in India, but not in, not in America. So true religion, first, it aligns itself with history. So if you study a religion that aligns itself with history, meaning 
the religious books of that religion also verifies with history, history books, then that is the first category of true religion. The second, the second criteria of true religion is that religion must be a faith-based theology that answers questions about life. If a religion is faith-based and it has a theology to answer any questions about life, what are the questions about life? Tell me, what are the questions on life? Why we are here? Why are we here? What happens when we die? So if your theology of your religion is faith-based and it answers the question of life, that for me categorizes as true religion. And then the third and final point of true religion is, you remember in the beginning we said, where's my friend? Right at the back. Remember we said that true religion has to be just like science. You remember that? And, I, and what was the main difference of science? Tell me. What was the main point about science which makes it different from religion? It proves everything. So there's documentation, there's reporting, there's evidence, right? There's evidence. So I believe that true religion also seeks evidence. And what is the evidence in true religion? First, we all spoke about it last time, prayer. When you pray and you're able to hear an answer, whether the answer is in your ear, whether it's in your heart, whether it's in your mind, but if you can get an answer, it means something is happening. That's evidence for me. That's my evidence. The second thing is the life change of a person. A person goes to prison because he's, he lived a, a, a horrible life. But when he goes to prison, he learns about religion. And because of that, he, when he comes out into society, he becomes a good person. So the change in his life is evidence. Another evidence in religion is a miracle. Anybody knows what is a miracle? A miracle? Yeah. Do you know miracle? What is a miracle? It's like when happens something that you don't expect that could happen. Like what, what something a, incredible. Yes, something incredible. Tell me examples of a miracle. Tell me examples of a miracle. Come on. A healing. Yes. Blind person, see. blind person starts to see. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? If a person is blind and he starts to see, that's a miracle. You remember my story that I told you the first time I met you? Yeah. You remember my story? Yeah. What, what did I say happened to me? I said I died, right? That was a crazy story. I said I died and I came back to life. How did I come back? Miracle. What happened? Miracle. Who did what to me? Somebody did huh? Somebody did something. What did they do? My father prayed. He prayed for me. Because my father prayed, I came back. So that is my evidence. That's my evidence. So true religion. Okay, quiet please. True religion will seek evidence, and it's not just theory-based, okay? So, based on that, today, your assignment, your homework for all of you is to list why you believe that Buddhism is categorized under any one of these five. True religion, modern religion, spirituality, Radical religion or fusion. Where does Buddhism fit in? I'll send you the notes today. You'll get the video tomorrow. But I will not see you next week. I will see you in two months. Yes, I'm going somewhere. And I will be back in two months. Once again, thank you. Thanks to all of you for being patient and listening during these lectures, please try, wait, 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 try, wait a minute, try to stay connected with the WhatsApp group, watch the videos, read the notes, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed day.